Take us through a uh, Survivor Series. You just kind of showed me a little video of it. What was through your mind? Like, how did you come about? For one, it? Lisa never took me off my feet, and I didn't see it coming. And had I had broken ankle, that would have been very bad for you, Vince. Very bad. <laughs> what was your mindset going into that? Did you plan that? Oh, like, I've been planning that, bro. I've been planning that. You know? Um, it was... They called me, by the way. I Afterwards? Know, the E. Yeah, after No, a, before. Okay. They okay. called me before to I do business. made Survivor Series. Fuck if I know. Okay. The 203 number called me a couple times. Uh, my voicemail's full. Thank you very much, babe. And uh, I have no idea what they wanted. But I knew what I was going to do, so I wasn't going to answer the phone. Um, man, it, it's simple, bro. As I've sat here and, and explained to you so much about marketing and, and the character of Enzo and how I marketed him... Do you people have any idea how much money it costs if you're a business on a marketing advertising level trying to trend in the top five worldwide? And how much more powerful that is than cable numbers on commercials? It was super smart. I give you that. It was amazing. So why'd I do it? Of course, I know why. Because I, I beat Survivor Series and many things in many facets in, in trends. Trended number one worldwide and had things going on and said about me in articles, understand. If they typed it and you read it on Reddit, then I probably manifest it. So anything that you say about me, good, bad, or indifferent, I know is already going to happen. If I show up to Survivor Series, I understand the backlash and the repercussions of my actions. On a media front, in a locker room front, in the world of wrestling, and what smart marks and... People who have negative things to say about me and people who already have their opinions about me, what they're going to say. There's nothing I can't conquer. There's nothing I can't conquer. That was pro wrestling. That's what that is. I beat, you know, I, I, first of all, there was never a case. The police never called me, ever, in my whole life for pertaining to incidents in my life since signing with the WWE. I've never even been contacted by the WWE once. All I ever did was show up to work every day and do my job to the best of my ability with that fucking microphone. And that just happened to be the best in the world at a certain point in time. Okay? So you can hate on me for that. Go ahead. But it was a job. And this is no different. I'm my own boss now. BYOB, motherfucker. Be your own boss. Not bring your own beer. That's what you should have done, Rob. You see, you had a few too. Steve Wise is too many before you walk in here asking me fucking fugazi questions. So, you know, I did it for a very, very few reasons. The next day, they're going to sit in on a meeting at Monday Night Raw. And they're going to go over all their trends and topics. <laughs> and I'm going to pop up on there. And they don't have a choice. And then they're going to see that I did better numbers as far as statistically speaking than any other wrestler that was on that pay-per-view. Now look at Paul Heyman. Look at ECW. Now take this back to the 90s. WCW. Dusty Rhodes. Take this back. I'm one fucking man. One man purchased a, purchased a $2,500 ticket. Showed up in a wig and stood up on a chair and got thrown out for that. Broke no laws. Broke no laws. So if you tell me, if you're into marketing, you tell me, break no laws, have no repercussions for your actions, for $2,500, you're going to trend worldwide. It's genius. Kiss my ass, everybody. Y'all can talk your shit. Guys who are in the ring, no disrespect. There's a reason why I did it I before gonna... the bell rang. But there's also a reason why I didn't do it. I thought that the Cruiserweights were going to go on next. And instead, the tag team match came out. I wasn't going to sit there for the whole tag team match because I was made. I was on oh. Twitter already trending. Yeah. And my brother-in-law sent it to me, and I'm sitting in the front row. I'm like, I got to reveal now. And I didn't want to do it while guys were working, and I didn't want to do it during their entrances. So I waited for entrances over, ding, 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 now do it, and then match began. But let's just face it, bro. Dude, y'all can kiss my ass. I ain't got no gripes with the WWE. I bought a ticket to watch your show. I wore a wig. <laughs> y'all want to hate on it? Go ahead. It just so happened 
that I double entendre dropped the album that I was working on with the WWE. And not by working on it, not in their studios, it's not their beats, it's not their shit, but it was the music I was going to pitch and sell to Vince. So that music is two years old, three years old. It may never have ever saw the light of day. But I did something else in music that people do not have the balls to do. I dropped music without anyone in the world hearing it before. And broke all the rules as far as dropping music goes. And no one helped me write a single word or piece of content, and I own it all. Every bit of that money for that music comes to me. 